coast. We uh, noticed the hot spots of fires uh, on Sumatra particularly and uh, we looked into some more detailed remote sensing data to figure out how large were these fires and where did they occur and we compared those data with the concession boundaries on the ground. Well we could confirm in Landsat satellite images that the hot spots were indeed fires on the ground and we could map the fires in the Landsat images and concluded that as much as 140,000 hectares had been under fire uh, in the area we, we looked at, which is part of the Riau province. Uh, we could further confirm that most of this was outside concession boundaries, but about a quarter was inside the concession boundaries as we could see it in government maps. Looking only at remote sensing images does not tell us why these fires happen, what are the underlying processes, who are the stakeholders and, and what are the issues on the ground. So we decided to travel to the Riau province and meet with stakeholders, look at the situation more in detail and more in depth. We could see and also hear from stakeholders that the predominant reason is oil palm expansion. That is the profitability of growing and selling oil palm uh, products is so high that it drives the deforestation and the conversion of land at a scale that uh, we perhaps haven't seen before. The actors seem to be a different type compared to what we have experienced before. It is probably less the large-scale corporations than before. It is also probably less the small-scale farmer than before. Instead, we have some form of medium-sized investment going on, which drives the conversion of land. Fire remains the most efficient tool to clear the land if you look at the cost and the labor involved. And that is the simple explanation why fire is still used, despite the fact that it is not legal. From a governance perspective, on one hand, it's quite simple. There are large-scale concessions and there are legal obligations by those that hold these concessions and manage the land. However, these large-scale um, concessions do not always take into consideration more detailed arrangements on the ground and the fact that within large-scale allocations of land, there may be local management, local communities that have, from a different perspective, claims to the same land. We know that from uh, the federal government side and in line with the moratorium on forestry, a lot of efforts are being made to clarify the governance of the forest lands. And this is done in part by developing a more precise and accurate map over the who has the rights to which parts of the forest land. But this may not be sufficient if one wants to deal also with the more local issues that may not completely align with the decisions made at the federal level. There is more work to be done to look in more detail at the local scale on how the land tenure situation actually looks like. One issue as a research organization is that it is very difficult to access data, both from public sources and from other sources, to be able to analyze the situation in more detail. Going forward, transparency and more open communication between stakeholders will be crucial. Otherwise, we may not be able to find solutions and ways forward before the conversion of land is complete. The effort that is required now is really to maintain the interest at the political level and at the community level on the fire situation and on the land management situation. The risk is of course that the media attention will fade very quickly when the fires stop, when the rains start. And when the media attention goes down, um, maybe so will the political attention. So the, the real fight against these fires at the moment is to keep the interest at the right 
level.